A warm welcome to all gathered here. On behalf of Panamila Institute of Technology, AICT Pre-Rana Gate Training Program, we welcome you all once again. Today we will discuss about uh, uh, signals and system as a part of a uh, gate training program for uh, EC and uh, EEE students. Signals and system is uh, one of the important uh, topic in the gate syllabus for both uh, EC as well as EEE. We will see the weightage uh, analysis in the last year uh, analysis for uh, EC students 2019 signals and system the it was 10.9 uh, percentage contribution was given from signals and system and uh, we can also see previous uh, years there is a good number of questions that are appearing from signals and system starting from 8 percentage to 15 percentage so at least we will be having three to six questions maximum of uh, eight questions was there and the minimum uh, we can expect two to three questions so signals and system is uh, one of the important uh, topic of a uh, gate syllabus now let me introduce you with uh, the definitions of signals and systems then we will move on to see what are the elementary signals available then we will discuss about uh, classifications of signals and we will also see some operations on signals so first let me introduce you with a signal a signal is a physical quantity that varies with respect to one or more independent variable and the signal will have some information on it a uh, basic example of a signal we can go for a speed signal and this is a sinusoidal signal is one of the example of a signal and the real time example we can also uh, assume a case study of a doctor by listening to the heartbeat of a patient and monitoring the blood pressure and temperature a doctor can uh, diagnose whether the patient is going to have uh, illness or he is not having the disease so this is one practical example where uh, signals plays a vital role and the parameter at which the signal is going to be varying so initially i said that a signal is a physical quantity that varies with respect to one or more independent variable if it is going to vary with one independent variable we call it as one dimensional signal uh, the best example of a one dimensional signal we can go for a speed signal and if it is two dimensional signal it is a image uh, two or more uh, we call it as multi dimensional example for a multi-dimensional signal three dimension we can go for a video signal so this is about the introduction of signal next uh, let me introduce you with the system a system is formally defined as an entity that manipulates one or more signals to accomplish a function thereby yielding a new signal so let me consider a system where i take some uh, input or we may call it as an excitation and this system process this input to produce a desired output uh, so this is the definition of a system uh, for example we can uh, consider an automatic speaker recognition system where let us consider an input to be a speech that is recognized that should be recognized by the particular system uh, say example a person uh, x or y comes and speaks to this particular system the system will re recognize this sig uh, voice and it will say who the speaker is so this is one of the example that we can uh, consider for the uh, system or a simple day-to-day -day life uh, electronics uh, gadgets like the cro is one of the system that we can uh, take as an example next modeling of a uh, uh, signal uh, representation of a signal by mathematical expression is called as uh, signal modeling by which we can classify signals with respect to continuous time signal discrete time signal and uh, digital signal so continuous time signal is uh, represented as ct uh, discrete time signal we denote uh, dt and the digital signal is uh, given by digital signal and uh, this is an example of a continuous time signal the definition of continuous time signal is the signal that is going to exist at each and every instant of time is called as continuous time signal it is denoted by x of t so we can see that each and every instant of time the signal is existing and this signal is also called as analog signals analog signals are continuous in amplitude and uh, next uh, let me introduce you with uh, discrete time signals discrete time signals are uh, defined as uh, signals that exist at distinct interval of time or distinct instants of time discrete time signals are often derived from the continuous time signal by a process called as sampling and it is denoted as x of n we can see 
the continuous time signal is existing at each and every instant of time whereas discrete time signal is existing at distinct interval of time there is no regular interval it is at some different distinct interval of time and here uh, the discretization is done with respect to time so this is very important uh, one mark uh, question uh, discretization with respect to time whereas amplitude is not change amplitude is continuous in nature so this point is to be noted here and uh, next digital signal uh, there is no real time digital signals available but what we can do is we can take the continuous analog signal and by two step process we can convert it into a digital signal uh, analog signal first uh, it is passed through a sampler by the process of sampling we obtain the discrete signal and that discrete signal is uh, passed through a quantizer to obtain a digital signal here in the case of a sampler discretization is done with respect to time we obtain the uh, discrete signal whereas in terms of a digital signal discretization is also done with respect to amplitude so first is uh, discretization was done with respect to time sampling discretization with respect to amplitude we get a digital signal and it is done by the quantizer and next let me move on to some basic elementary signals we will see some basic elementary signals a few elementary signals which are very important uh, parameters for uh, testing of systems and we do have standard signals are used some of them are uh, unit step signal unit ramp signal uh, unit impulse signal parabola signal signum function rectangular function all these uh, functions with respect to signals we will see in the upcoming class so first let me introduce you with uh, unit step signal the signal as zero value the signal has zero value for t less than zero and it has a value one for t greater than zero is called as a unit step signal since the signal looks like a step function we call it as a step signal so you can see here is a step resemblance so we call it a step signal here mathematically we will be representing it as u of t is equal to one for t greater than or equal to zero zero for t less than zero next uh, unit ramp signal unit ramp signal is uh, defined as uh, r of t is equal to t for t greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for t less than 0 we can uh, have a ramp structure over here that is the reason why we the name ramp we get 0 comma 0 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 so it means that 0 comma 0 for t we also have the value as t 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 unit ramp signal so ramp functions enables to evaluate how a continuous time signal would respond to a signal that increases linearly with the time so where most of the cases this is used is we can go for evaluating how continuous time signals would respond to a signal that increases linearly with respect to time and next is a parabola signal and parabola signal is represented as p of t t square by 2 for t greater than or equal to 0, 0 for t less than 0. So, this is a parabolic signal. Next, impulse function. Uh, impulse function is also known as Dirac delta function. Unit impulse is defined as del of t is equal to 0 for t not equal to 0 and minus infinity to plus infinity del of t dt is equal to 1. Impulse del of t is 0 everywhere except at origin and the total area under the curve the total area under the unit impulse is unity it is important to point out that the value of del of zero of del of t the value of del of zero of del of t at t is equal to zero is not defined here the amplitude goes till infinity amplitude goes till infinity this point is also very important del of t can be viewed as a limiting factor of a rectangular pulse of unit area specifically the duration of the pulse is decreased the uh, duration of the pulse keeps on decreasing and its amplitude keeps on increasing such that the area under the pulse is maintained constant at unity as duration of a rectangular pulse approximates impulse more closely we will be obtaining a impulse signal so we can uh, approximate it as del of t is equal to limit del tends to 0 x del of t. By plotting the particular thing, we will be applying 
the concept here the amplitude is del here the amplitude is 1 over del when we multiply del with 1 by del we will get the area to be 1 by applying impulse signal to a system one can get the impulse response of the system from impulse response it is possible to get the transfer function from impulse response once we can also get the step response as well as ramp response by integrating them so it is always easy with the basic of uh, impulse signal we can get uh, the responses for uh, step as well as ramp signals now we will see the relationship between basic uh, three signals impulse step ramp and parabola Dif differentiating uh, ramp we will get uh, u of t and differentiating u of t we will get get uh, del of t similarly integrating del of t we will be getting u of t integration of u of t we will get r of t integrating r of t we will get parabola whereas differentiation of parabola will yield us ramp so this is the relation ship between uh, parabola ramp step and impulse signal so this is to be known next let me introduce uh, you with a few other uh, functions first uh, rectangular pulse function rectangular function is defined as uh, pi, uh, pi of t is equal to 1 pi of t is equal to 1 in the range minus 1 by 2 to 1 by 2 or we can uh, mathematically represent it as pi of t is equal to 1 for modulus of t less than or equal to half 0 otherwise unit area triangular function it is denoted as tri of t it is 1 minus mod t over the range mod t less than or equal to 1 0 for mod t greater than 1 so minus 1 to plus 1 we will have the triangular function and uh, at 0 the amplitude is going to be 1 unit signum function it is 1 for t greater than 0 minus 1 for t less than 0 and it is 0 at t is equal to 0 so units uh, signum function plays a vital role in communication with a uh, sync function as well sync function is given by sync of t is equal to sin t divided by t over the range minus infinity less than or equal to t less than or equal to infinity this is the sync function and sinusoidal signal this is a common signal that each and every one of you might have aware from basic uh, uh, physics we read x of t is equal to a sin omega t plus theta or a cos omega t plus theta where a is the amplitude omega is the frequency in radians per second and phi is the phase angle and this is the graphical representation of a sinusoidal signal exponential signals we do have a two classification real exponential and uh, exponential with respect to complex signals also first let me see the real exponential signal x of t is equal to a e power a t where capital a and small a are real now let us assume uh, small a to be equal to 0 e power 0 is equal to 1 it means that for x of t from minus infinity to plus infinity we will get answer to be e power 0 is 1 multiplied with uh, capital a as a constant we will get 1 now let us consider uh, small a to be greater than 0 so let me have a value to be phi we will get e power phi t e power phi t or if i am assuming the, the value to be plus infinity if i assume the value of uh, a to be plus infinity i will get e power infinity is again infinity so for infinity the amplitude goes till infinity if you put here minus infinity you will get e power minus infinity to, to 0 so for minus infinity it is 0 we all already know that for 0 it is a for plus infinity is infinity so we will have a growing exponential graph and similarly for uh, a less than 0 it is going to be a decaying exponential graph next complex exponentials it is uh, x of t is a e power a t where a is a complex variable sigma plus j omega if i substitute here a e power sigma plus j omega t i can sub, uh, multiply exponentials and separate this with uh, exponential formula e power a plus b can be rewritten as e power a into e power b i will be obtaining a e power sigma t into e power j omega t we all know that e power j theta can be written as cos theta plus uh, j sin theta i am using the same concept here cos omega t plus j sin omega t we already have the phenomena for a real part so i am applying the same concepts over here this is the real part uh, for at assuming that your uh, sigma value or omega value is equal to zero next 
omega value is equal to 0, sigma less than 0, omega equal to 0, sigma greater than 0, we will get this graphs. If omega is not equal to 0, generalized uh, sinusoidal signal. Omega greater than 0, we will have an exponential growing signal. Omega less than 0, we will have an exponential decaying signal. So, these are the complex exponential signal that we will be using in communications. Gaussian function, it is defined as uh, g of t, which is equal to e power minus a t square. We over the limit minus infinity less than or less than t less than infinity. It's extremely used in the probability theory. Maximum, uh, most of the probability signals, we will be using the Gaussian functions. Next, we will see the generalized basic operations on uh, signals. So operation on signals can be classified into two types depending upon the parameter. If we are going to operate on uh, independent parameter or with respect to the dependent parameter. If the operation on signal is going to be performed on independent parameter, we do have three broader classifications with respect to time shifting, time folding or reversal or time scaling. If it is done with respect to dependent parameter, we will have signal addition, signal multiplication and amplitude scaling. Uh, so, before moving on to the independent parameter, let us uh, see what is uh, with respect to signal addition, signal multiplication and uh, amplitude scaling. We all uh, know this uh, from basic uh, signal addition. Say example, uh, if we have two signals, one is our voice signal, another is a noise signal which is generated due to the fan. When the participants you are hearing, both the signals uh, you will be hearing. You will be hearing the noise of the fan as well as the voice of the speaker. So it means that there is a signal addition that is taking place. X of t is equal to x1 of t plus neta of t. We will consider neta of t to be nice. Or in general, we can have a, a video, video whichever we are watching in the television, where audio signal is merged with the video signal to addition of signals that is taking place. That is one best example of a signal addition. Whereas for a signal multiplication, we are mostly used in terms of uh, uh, filters where uh, windowing coefficients are multiplied with the signals. So we can go for multiplications of signal. Then we do amplitude scaling. With respect to amplitude scaling, X of T uh, can be uh, either uh, in growing amplitude or uh, decaying amplitude. We can, uh, if uh, we consider uh, X of T to be equal to A into x of t or 1 by a into x of t. So this is the two examples of uh, amplitude uh, scaling where the amplitude is directly involved with respect to the operation. So this is the most important parameter where a may be the scalar value. We will assume if a to be uh, 4, your amplitude is multiplied by 4. If uh, you are considering A to be 1 by 4, your uh, amplitude of the signal is divided by 4. This is one of the example or uh, very simple practical day to day life example amplifier resistors. You can take this case as an uh, example. Next, let us see uh, what is done with respect to independent parameter. First, we do have time shifting. Next, uh, time folding or uh, reversal. Then time scaling. So time shifting, if a continuous time signal is X of T, the shifted continuous time signal is represented as X of T minus capital T. This is for continuous time. The same thing is applicable for the discrete time as well. If X of N is a discrete time signal, then the shifted signal is represented as X of N minus K. If uh, capital T and capital K. If capital T and capital K are positives, then shifting is done with respect to right. If capital T and capital K are negative, shifting is done with respect to left. Right shift, it is a delaying signal. Left shift, it is advancing signal. Uh, so this is the basic principle of time shifting. Next, time folding or uh, reversal, it is just a mirror image of a signal with respect to origin. We call it as a time folding or reversal. Now, if I consider a signal, continuous time signal as X of T, the reversal signal will be X of minus T, where minus T is obtained by just replacing T with uh, minus T. With respect to discrete time signal, uh, X of N, 
x of minus n. So this is the time folding or reversal problem. Next time scaling. If x of t or x of n be a uh, given signal, either it may be a continuous time signal or a discrete time signal, the scaling parameter is, let us assume the scaling parameter to be a, x of t, the time scaling operation is done, we will obtain x of a t or x of t by a. If x of a t, it is compression, x of t by a, it is going to be expansion. Very simplest thing for time scaling, whatever this uh, original scale value do you, you will be having, divide the scale by a, you will be getting the time scaling concept. Next, the precedence rule, how we have to apply operation on signal. First thing, you have to apply shifting property, shifting, then we have to go for folding, then only we have to go for uh, scaling. So this is the thing that we have to do. Then we can go for uh, dependent parameters. Uh, for uh, easy shortcut uh, to remember any given problem, y of t is equal to x of a t plus b. x of a t plus b. Uh, the steps to be followed is first to find the value of a and b. Then if b is positive, do the right shift. If b is negative, do the left shift. Second, check whether the value of uh, a positive or negative and you can go for doing scaling operation for scaling operation once the shifting is done just divide the scale by a after that check for a to be positive or negative if a is positive you can stop till that if a is negative we have to do folding operation this is the simplest steps that we have to follow for operation and signal while discussing the problems we will see one or two problems with respect to operation and signals Next, classification of signals. Continuous and discrete time signals are further classified into periodic, aperiodic signals, even and odd signals, causal and non-causal signals, deterministic and random signal, energy and power signal. Uh, so we will start with one by one. First, let me introduce you with the definition. Then we will see the problems with respect to all these uh, five classifications. First, periodic and uh, aperiodic signal. Periodic, uh, in general term, periodic. It means that there is some continuous thing that is going to happen. Say, example, uh, first period, second period, third period, you will be having in timetable. What does that mean? Say, every 15 minutes, your uh, timetable, the staff will be changing or the subject will be changing. So there is a continuity in uh, some thing that is happening. So a yeah, signal is said to be periodic if it is going to satisfy this particular condition. X of t is equal to X of t plus capital T x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T. If this condition is satisfied, then it is called as periodic signal. And this proper uh, property is called as a conditional uh, property for uh, periodicity. That is, it is periodicity condition. x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T. That is, a signal should repeat itself after every certain time period is called as a periodic signal. If it is not going to repeat, then we call it as a periodic signal. Condition for periodicity, x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T, where capital T is called as fundamental time period. And the fundamental time period is defined as minimum time that is required for a signal to get repeated is called as fundamental time period. The minimum time period that is required for a signal to get repeated is called as fundamental time period. So by condition, uh, condition of uh, periodicity, any given signal is said to be periodic if it is going to satisfy the condition x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T, where capital T is called as fundamental time period. The signal should get repeated itself after certain time period is called as periodic signal. If this is not done, then we call it as a periodic signal. Next, even signal and odd signal. For even signal and odd signal, again, it should satisfy the condition. Any signal is said to be even signal. If it is going to satisfy the condition, x of t is equal to x of minus t, or x of minus t is equal to x of t. If this condition is satisfied, then we call it as even signal. If x of minus t is equal to minus of x of t, then we call that signal as odd signal. 
Next, causal signal. A signal is said to be causal if all the values of t less than 0 should be 0. Then we call that signal to be causal signal. Whereas a positive part of the signal exists and the negative part will be 0. So x of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0 then we call that signal to be causal signal. The best example, unit step signal is the best example of a causal signal where uh, it has got uh, 1 for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than 0. Next, non-causal signal. If it is not going to satisfy this condition, we call it as non-causal signal. The next is uh, deterministic and random signal. A signal is said to be deterministic if it can be mathematically modeled. Any signal can be mathematically modeled or mathematically expressed. We call that signal to be deterministic signal. And if it cannot be mathematically modeled, we call it as random signal. A best example of deterministic signal, a sinusoidal signal, a x of t is equal to a sin omega t plus theta. If this mathematically modeled, exponential signal a e power j theta or a e power uh, j omega t mathematically modeled, tan theta, tan omega t plus theta mathematically modeled random signals that cannot be mathematically modeled and it cannot be predicted the best example of a random signal is a speed signal we cannot uh, determine what i'm going to talk next we cannot see a uh, say example how much uh, the amplitude is going to come next uh, what is the frequency at which i'm going to talk all are going to be random in nature most of the real time signals are random in nature next is energy signal and a power signal uh, for energy signal and power signal, first we have to compute uh, energy as well as power of that signal. And uh, if we, after computing energy and power, if energy of the uh, signal is finite and power is zero, we call that signal as energy signal. If energy of the signal is infinity and power is finite, then we call that signal as power signal. So this is a uh, rega regarding the basic definitions of uh, classifications of signals. So quickly uh, refreshing what we have seen till now, we started with uh, what is a signal. A signal is a physical quantity that varies with respect to one or more independent parameter. Best example of a signal is going to be ECG signal. If it is going to vary with respect to one parameter, we call it as one dimensional signal. Example, speed signal. If it is going to be a two parameter, Parameter, we call it as image or two or more parameter we call it as multi-dimensional the three-dimensional signal best example is video next we have seen what is a system an entity or a module that operates on a signal to produce a desired output is called as a system example CRO is the best example of a system then I have introduced you with uh, basic elementary signals unit step signal unit ramp signal unit impulse signal parabola signal and we have also seen the relationship between all these elementary signals uh, starting with unit step signal unit step signal is uh, defined as u of t is equal to 1 for t greater than or equal to 0 and uh, t equal to 0 for t less than 0 so this is unit step signal and we have seen unit ramp signal u of t is equal to t for t greater than or equal to 0 0 for t less than 0 and a parabolic signal p of t is equal to t square by 2 for t greater than or equal to 0 0 for t less than 0 impulse function it is also called as direct delta function uh, the, the mathematical representation is del of t is equal to 0 for t not equal to 0 and minus infinity to plus infinity del of t dt is equal to 1 where uh, amplitude of uh, del of t at t is equal to 0 goes till infinity and the area under the curve is going to be 1. These two things is to be known. And the uh, relationship between the basic elementary signal, we go with from impulse to parabola, it is integrating. From parabola to impulse, it is going to be differentiating. There might be some question, to what is the double differentiation of ramp? double differentiation of ramp you will get impulse what is double integration of uh, impulse we will obtain uh, ramp what is double integration of uh, step signal we will get parabola so these are few questions that may we may expect next uh, rectangular function triangular functions unit signum functions sync function sinusoidals exponentials complex exponentials Gaussian function, 
then i have introduced you with uh, operation on signals where operation can be on a dependent parameter or independent parameter dependent parameter signal addition signal multiplication amplitude scaling if it is going to be independent parameters uh, time shifting time folding or reversal time scaling and we have seen with respect to signal addition uh, is very best example addition of two signals nice with uh, speech uh, signal multiplication where windowing coefficients is multiplied with the original signal in windowing concepts uh, for filter then uh, amplitude scaling amplifiers where your amplitude is here uh, increased multiplied time shifting property for uh, continuous time signal x of t minus capital t x of n minus ca capital k shifting if uh, you are uh, t and k is positive we go for right shift if t and k is negative we go for uh, left shift folding it is going to be just a mirror image y of t will be x of minus t then we have seen scaling y of t is equal to x of a t if a is go, uh, a we x of a t is called as compression x of t by a we call it as uh, expansion similarly all these cases for uh, discrete also we have also introduced you with uh, classifications of signal periodic and uh, a periodic signal energy power signal even odd signal causal non causal signal deterministic and uh, random signal a signal is said to be periodic if it is going to get repeated after a certain time period and it should follow the condition for periodicity x of t is equal to x of t plus capital t where x capital t is called as fundamental time period the minimum time period that it takes the signal for getting repeated is called as a fundamental time period if it is not going to get repeated or not following the condition for periodicity we call it as a periodic signal even and odd signal uh, it should satisfy the condition x of minus t is equal to x of t then we call it as even signal x of minus t is equal to minus x of t we call it as odd signal causal signal any signal whose value less than zero is going to be zero that is x of t is equal to zero for t less than zero we call it as causal signal if this condition is not satisfied we call it as non-causal signal deterministic signal random signal any signal that can be mathematically modeled or determined is called as deterministic signal example sinusoidal signal x of t is equal to a cos omega t plus theta or a sin omega t plus theta random signals a signal that cannot be mathematically modeled we call it as random signals energy signal power signal further first we have to find the energy and power of the signals if energy is finite power is zero we call it as energy signal if energy is infinite and power is going to be finite we call it as power signal so this is uh, the basic classifications of signals we will discuss about the problems of uh, classifications of signals now we will start solving uh, problems with respect to operation on signals and then we will discuss some problems with respect to classifications of signal and we will finally see what are the previous uh, gate problems uh, associated with uh, about topics now let me uh, start with uh, time shifting operation of signal first operation of signal is time shifting as i said earlier uh, we are going to either do left shift or right shift depending upon the parameter uh, generally we assume it as x of n minus capital n or x of t minus capital t if uh, capital t is going to be positive value we are going to do right shift if capital t is going to be negative value we are going to do left shift a uh, few books follow some other notation x of n plus k or x of t plus k but you can stick on to one single uh, notation uh, here we, we a given signal x of n so they have given a signal x of n which has got a uh, amplitude 1 at 0 amplitude 2 at 1 amplitude 3 at 2 and 1 at 3 so the, this is a given signal x of n and let us try to find x of n minus 2 and x of n plus 1 uh, first by the general concept x of n minus k we have found that k is equal to 2 it means that the original signal is going to be right shifted by two units the initial signal is at the origin so from here two shift we have to do so it means zero to one is first shift one to two is second shift the entire signal instead of zero it will start at two similarly all the parameters will be shifted by two units uh, so we can see that zero is shifted to two one is shifted to three 2 is shifted to 4 and 3 is shifted to 5. This is the uptight signal x of n minus 2. Uh, generally, we do call this signal as delayed uh, signal. And 
let us try to find x of n plus 1. x of n plus 1, again, here the n k value is going to be negative. Since general parameter x of n minus k, k value here is negative. It means that we have to go for left shift by n units, uh, k units. What is a k value here? k value is 1. So I am going to left shift by 1 unit. So it means that it is going to be advanced from 0. The, the signal will be advanced by 1 unit. So it will be uh, starting at minus 1. 1 value will go to 0. 2 value will go to 1. 3 value will go to 2. So the signal will start at minus 1 and end at 2. So this is the signal. So this is a time shifting operation. Next let us see time scaling operation. Uh, generally I said that scaling is very simple. Just divide the scale by A. You need not worry about whether it is going to be expansion or uh, compression. Find what is the component. General terminology Y of T is equal to X of A T. Find what is the value of A. Just divide the scale by A. Now they have given a signal. Let us assume a signal which is having um, amplitude 1 from 0 to 2. Now we can take any given problem. Say example if I take X of 3 T. What is A value? A value is 3. Just divide the scale by 3. So it means 0 by 3, 2 by 3. So we will have the scaling value from 0 to 2 by 3. So for uh, continuous case, all these things holds good. But whereas when it comes to the discrete case, uh, 2 by 3 is not going to exist because it exists at distinct interval of time. We will have values at uh, only whole numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 only values will exist. So one value will exist at 0 and the other value will be 0 because at 2 by 3 there is no value, it will be 0. So this is one thing that you have to remember. The scaling principle when you are dividing the scale by A value, uh, find that whether you are going to apply it for a continuous signal or a discrete signal. If you are applying for a continuous signal, no issues. When we apply for discrete signal, make sure that it is a whole number. If it is not a whole number, uh, there the value will not exist. Uh, say, let me take an example. Mm, we are going to find uh, x of 2t for this. So, what I said, a value is 2, just divide the scale by 2. 0 by 2, 2 by 2. It means that here you will have 1. So, the x of 0 is 0, x of uh, 2 is 1. It is going to be a compression. Next, x of 1 by 2t. x of 1 by 2t. a value is 1. 1 by 2. I am going to again divide the scale by 1 by 2. What happens? 0 divided by 1 by 2. 2 goes to the top. 2 into 0 is 0. 0 again. 2 divided by 1 by 2. So it means 2 into 2. 4. So 0 to 4. It means the expansion. So AT is going to be when A greater than 1, we are going to have it as compression. When A is less than 1, we are going to have it as expansion. Similarly, for the discrete case, I say, as I said earlier, uh, same thing holds good. Mm, same problem if I am assuming it to be 2, what happens here? 0, you will have 0. 2 by 2 is 1. Uh, discrete value, here you will have uh, amplitude 1. Here you will have amplitude 1 at 1. Similarly, here also, uh, for 0 it is 1 and uh, for 4 it will be 1. Whereas if I assumed it as 3, what happens here? For a discrete case, here you will have 0. Here you will have... Uh, 2 by 3. 2 by 3 will not exist. So this value, you should not show it in the discrete case. So this alone you have to remember for scale. Next a reversal. Reversal as we said earlier, it is going to be just a mirror image. Uh, if I say example, let me take a signal here, which is uh, having an amplitude 1 and from minus 1 to 2. If I want to do folding operation, what happens? The positive side will go to the negative side and negative will come to the positive side. It is just a mirror image. So this is how it changes. So the final uh, value will be um, minus 2 to 1. We can have some similar examples. Minus T1 to T2. So we will have it as minus T2 to T1. Similarly for another discrete case. Minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So what happens? This 2 will come to this side minus 2. This 1 coefficient will come to this side minus 1. And 0 remains 0. And this minus 1 will go to plus 1. So it means that for minus 2, the amplitude is 3. For uh, minus 1, the amplitude is 2. For 0, amplitude is 1. For plus 1, the amplitude will be 1. So this is just a reversal, time reversal. We do have amplitude reversal. As I said earlier, it is just uh, your entire signal is going to be either multiplied or divided by the parameter. 
with respect to scaling. Similarly, for reversal, uh, just multiply it by minus. What happens here with respect to x axis? All these are with respect to y axis. Here, this is with respect to x axis. Now, yeah, minus x of t. Minus x of t. Here, you are keeping mirror. So, what happens? This amplitude 1 will turn to the bottom side. We will have at minus 1. So, this is the amplitude reversal. Next, let us see another uh, generalized example. A continuous time signal x of t is shown. Sketch and label the following x of t minus 1, x of 2 minus t. So, we will try to first figure out x of t minus 1. And I want uh, you all to work out uh, how x of t minus 2 can be obtained. Now, let us uh, start with x of t minus 1. For uh, this kind of problems, I will give you a shortcut to remember. Generally, I assume any given signal with uh, respect to this formula. y of t is equal to x of a t plus b. You can note it down. y of t is equal to x of a t plus b. First and foremost thing is find what is the value of A as well as B. If B is positive, you have to go for left shift. B is positive, go for left shift. If B is negative, go for right shift. So this is the first step that you have to note down. Second, you have to go for scaling operation. Third, you have to go find the value of A. If A is positive, you can stop till the second step. If A is negative, you have to go for folding operation. So this is a simple shortcut that uh, you can uh, do any problem. Now you take this particular problem. They are given a X of T. Now we are supposed to find X of T minus 1. First step, what is A value? What is B value? You can see here A value here is going to be 1. B value is going to be minus 1. So B is negative. B is negative. We have to go for right shift by 1 unit. If B is positive, we have to go for left shift by one unit. Since B is negative, what am I going to do is first initial step, right shift by one unit. So it means that two will go to three, one will go to two, zero will go to one, minus one will go to zero and minus two will go to minus one. So the entire signal is going to be just shifted by one unit right from minus one to Three, the signal will be there. So this is the step. Next, what is the value of A? A value here is 1. After A value is 1, you have to do scaling operation, divide the scale by 1. What happens when you divide by 1? It's nothing, nothing is going to change. Same value you will get. If A is positive or negative? Yes, exactly. A is going to be positive. After A positive, now uh, we can stop till the second step. So this is the very simplest procedure for any given problem. We can go by the generalized procedure y of t is equal to x of a t plus b. First step, find the value of a, find the value of b. If b is positive, if b is positive, you have to go for left shift. If b is negative, do right shift by b units. Step number two, divide the scale by a units. Whatever the value of a, divide the scale by a units. Step number three, check whether A is positive or negative. If A is positive, you can stop till the step two. If A is negative, we have to do the folding operation. Now let me check the second problem. The second problem is X of 2 minus T. So shall we rewrite this uh, question? We can rewrite it as X of minus T plus 2. X of minus T plus 2. So here there are going to be uh one simple thing that we have to do we are rearranging the question with our format what is our format x of a t plus b so i have rearranged it as x of minus t plus 2 what is a value a value here is minus 1 what is b value b value is 2 now b positive or negative or b is positive our b positive do the left shift by 2 units now left shift by 2 units now minus 2 value will go to minus 4 Similarly, 2 will go to 0. So the entire signal has to be shifted by B units. Here B value is 2, so I am shifting it by 2 units. Next, what is the value of uh, A? A value is 1 again. So divide the scale by 1. We, there, is not, there is not going to be any change. Now what is the next step? A positive or negative? Here A value is going to be negative. Up A value negative, now I am going to keep a mirror over here. 
if I keep a mirror over here, this image is going to be inverted, reversal, folding. So what happens here? From 0 to 1, I will have the RAM. Then for 1 to 2, I will have this. 2 to 3, I will have this. Then 3 to 4, I will have this. So this is the final answer of X of 2 minus T. It's a very simple procedure for operation on signal you can do with this. Next, for, we will assume another example also. For a signal X of T, sketch X of 3T plus 2. So this is my signal. Very simple. Find what is the value of A, what is the value of B. A value is 3, B value is 2. If B is positive, we have to do left shift by B units. Here B is 2, so left shift by 2 units. If a minus 1 value will be shifted to minus 2, minus 3. So the entire signal will start from minus 3. Correct? Here 1. If 1 under null, first value is uh, 0, second value is minus 1. If a minus 3 to minus 1, the entire signal is going to be. So you can shift accordingly. Now come. The next step, what is the value of A? A value is 3. Upper divide the scale by 3. What happens? 3 by 3 minus 1. So this you will have um, 5 by 2 no general outgoing. So it becomes 5 by 6 minus 2 by 3. Uh, this we can have it as uh, minus 3 by 2. It is minus 3 by 6 minus 1 by 3. So very simple. That's all. Yeah, it is done. A positive or negative, A positive, we can stop here. So very simple, any given problem, operation on signal, fraction of seconds, we can uh, solve it by using this uh, methodology. Next, we will go to see the operation on signal is done. We will see classifications of uh, signals. In classification of signal, we will start with even and odd signal first. As I said earlier, what is the concept of even signal? Any signal is said to be even if it is satisfying the condition x of minus t is equal to x of t. Any signal is said to be odd signal if it is satisfying the condition x of minus t is equal to minus x of t. These two things you have to remember. Now we will start with even. It is a symmetrical or mirror image about y axis. As I said earlier, x of t is equal to x of minus t. You can take a signal. Any signal you can go for uh, time reversal. So here by looking into the signal, we can identify whether the signal is even signal or not. You see here. Put a mirror over here in the middle, what happens? It is just a mirror image. You put a mirror here, it is a mirror image. Just a time reversal. You put a mirror over here, you can see it like this. So this is even signal. What happens for all this case if I going to see if it is an odd signal? So odd signal now, it is going to be anti-symmetrical. Anti-symmetrical about y-axis. As I said earlier in the formula, x of minus t is equal to minus of x of t. It means that my signal, instead of coming like this, it will be in the reverse way. So it will be in this reverse way. So that is the major difference between symmetrical and anti-symmetrical. We can take uh, one more example here. You can see here, this is an example here. So very simplest examples, x of minus t is equal to minus of x of t, anti-symmetrical. It is uh, even signal is symmetrical. Next, uh, you should remember few certain formulas. When we multiply even signal with even signal, we will get even signal. Even signal multiplied with odd signal, we will get odd signal. Odd multiplied or divided with odd signal, we will get even signal. Again, even signal plus or minus even signal, we will get even signal. Even plus odd is neither even nor odd. So remember all this uh, uh, shortcuts, odd plus odd is equal to odd. Because sometimes they will ask, uh, what is uh, t square into t power 4, whether it is even signal or odd signal. You could directly if I say that it is even signal by using this formulas. And uh, any signal can be divided into two parts mainly. X of t can be written as x even of t plus x odd of t. What is the even component? What is odd component? Even component is given by x of t plus x of minus t divided by 2. And odd component is given by x of t minus x of minus t by 2. Any given signal can be expressed in terms of even component and odd component. X of t is equal to x even of t plus x odd of t. X even of t can be computed by x of t plus x of minus t divided by 2. 
Similarly, odd component can be computed by x of t minus x of minus t by 2. Uh, let us take a small example. Let me take a t square. Uh, what happens here? t square x of t, I am assuming it to be uh, x of t to be t square. x of minus t will be uh, minus t, the whole square is again t square. t square plus t square is 2t square divided by 2, I will get t square. It means that what is my original signal, I have obtained it same. So my even component is t square. Odd component. What happens here? t square minus of t square. It becomes 0. Odd component 0, even component existing. So the given signal is even signal. Let us assume t cube. What happens here? t cube, if I am assuming signal to be t cube, t cube plus minus t cube. Minus t cube is minus, minus of t the whole cube I will have. It is minus t cube. t cube minus t cube 0. So even component becomes 0. What happens to the odd component? t cube minus minus of t the whole cube. So it is minus t cube minus into minus plus t cube. t cube plus t cube is 2 t cube divided by 2. We will get t cube. So even component 0, odd component existing. So the given signal is going to be odd. So this is how we can also find whether the signal is going to be even or odd. One other methodology. Next, we will see periodic and uh, a periodic. As I said earlier, a signal is said to be periodic if it is going to get repeated itself after certain time period. And it should satisfy the condition for periodicity. The condition for periodicity is x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T. In some general cases, we can rewrite it as x of t is equal to x of t plus or minus n t naught. Where n is an integer, capital T naught is a fundamental time period. As I said earlier, fundamental time period is a minimum time period that is required for a signal to get repeated. Now let us consider a signal. So this is a triangular signal. You can see that it is repeating uh, at every interval. Now what is the minimum interval that the signal is repeating? You can see minimum integral T naught is 1. We can also claim that T naught 0 to 2, 2 to 4 also it is repeating. But what is the minimum period? Minimum period is 0 to 1. So T naught is equal to 1 and the fundamental time period is 1. Now let us uh, assume a exponential signal, complex exponential signal and we will derive what is the fundamental time period for the complex exponential. Now what happens? X of t is equal to a naught e power j omega naught t. If it is going to satisfy condition of periodicity, the formula is x of t is equal to x of t plus capital t naught. I am going to substitute over here. If I substitute here, what I will get? a naught e power j omega naught t plus capital t naught. Now we can uh, segregate this a naught e power j omega naught t plus e, a, e power j omega t naught because a power e sorry a, uh, e power a into b can be rewritten as e power a plus b or e power a plus b can be subdivided into e power a into e power b with that concept i have subdivided here we have got a naught e power j omega naught a naught e power j omega naught both gets cancelled so e power j omega naught t is equal to 1 in general we know that e power j 2 pi k is also equivalent to 1 from this, say you can eliminate the exponential. We will have j omega naught t naught is equal to j 2 pi k. j j gets cancelled. Omega naught t naught is equal to 2 pi k. From this, t naught is equal to 2 pi k divided by omega naught. Where k is the integer. So with this formula, we can compute the periodic component of the signal. t naught is equal to 2 pi by omega naught. Omega will be given in the question. So uh, find the value of omega. Substitute here. We will be getting the fundamental time period. Now let us see one problem with respect to that. X of t is equal to a naught sin 2 pi t. Now what is the generalized formula? a sin omega t plus theta. Theta is 0. What is the value of omega? Omega here is 2 pi. What is the fundamental time period formula? t is equal to 2 pi by omega. What is omega we found here? Omega is 2 pi. 2 pi divided by 2 pi is equal to 1. So uh, it is periodic signal with the fundamental period t naught is equal to 1. I will give you one more shortcut. Any given signal if it is continuous and it is going to be a single function, 
definitely it is uh, all going to be periodic because uh, if you go substitute here you will end up uh, x of t plus capital t to be periodic so let us have some examples like sin theta cos theta e power j theta all these three cases if the signals are there you can directly write it as periodic signals next uh, let us assume uh, another question x2 of t is equal to a naught sin 2 pi t plus 30 degree Apa a sin omega t plus theta omega a is 2, uh, 2 pi and theta a is 30 degree uh, fundamental period can be calculated as t is equal to 2 pi by omega omega values 2 pi 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled t naught is equal to 1 similarly we can do it for all the other problems also now we will take a time period of a signal is unaffected by either you do time shifting or a time reversal or amplitude reversal or amplitude shifting and changes in phase of the signal. So this thing that you have to remember with a very important key point, your time period of a signal is going to be unaffected. Even though if we are going to do time shifting or a reversal or amplitude reversal or amplitude shifting and even though we change the phase of the signal. Now let us consider a different signal sin square 4 pi t. Sin square theta can be rewritten as 1 plus sin 2 theta by 2. Uh, or 1 minus, sorry, it is uh, sin square theta can be rewritten as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. Here uh, it is 4 pi t. So we will have cos 8 pi t by 2. 1 minus cos 8 pi t by 2. Omega value here is 8 pi. T naught is equal to 2 pi by omega, which is equal to 1 by 4. Here 1 by 2 is a DC component. Now, when we have uh, two or more pe signals, periodic signal, and how to find the periodic? First, we have to go for finding the ratio of the integers. If the ratio of integers is going to be rational, we will call it as periodic signal. So, let us consider two signal x of t, x1 of, which is having x1 of t plus x2 of t. Here uh, x1 of t is having a time t1, x2 of t is having the fundamental time period uh, t2. We have to compute t1 by t2. If t1 by t2 is a ratio of integer, then we can call that signal to be periodic signal. And how, how to find a fundamental time period? For fundamental time period, we can go for calculating LCM of t1 and t2. So this is one shortcut that we have we can uh, remember let us see one example x of t is equal to sin 2t plus cos 3 pi t by looking into the question itself we can see that omega 1 is 2 omega 2 is 3 pi upper t1 is equal to 2 pi divided by 2 so 2 pi divided by 2 what happens we will end up with 2 2 gets cancelled we will have pi similarly here 2 pi divided by 3 pi so pi pi gets cancelled, we will have 2 by 3. Here we are having pi. Here we are having 2 divided by 3. 2 divided by 3. Upper LCM if I take 2 divided pi divided by 2 by 3. Upper 3 pi by 2. 3 pi by 2 is irrational. So it is a periodic signal. So whichever way you want to uh, follow, you can follow. Here they have given with respect to omega, what I was telling was with respect to t. Next let us uh, see another problem, sin 2 pi t plus cos root 2 pi t. Whenever you have uh, two signals and if you uh, get uh, this root to all, definitely you can uh, consider one signal is having root to another signal. If it is not having root to, you can find that it is a periodic signal. This is one small shortcut by inference you can tell because uh, root 2 is not going to be a ratio of integer in here. Uh, omega 1 by omega 2, what will happen? 2 pi divided by root 2 pi. Pi pi will get cancelled. We will have root 2. Root 2 is an irrational number. So it is not a periodic signal. So anything can be done with using this particular formulas. So for uh, time period, we uh, go for LCM. When we go for uh, frequency, omega naught, omega value, we can go for uh, finding the HCF. So this is another methodology by which we can compute periodic, a periodic fundamental periods. Next, we will see energy and power signals. As I said earlier, 
a signal is said to be energy signal if energy is finite power is zero then we call it as energy signal for uh, power signal energy is infinite and power is finite uh, first we have to compute the energy and power the formula for computing energy of a signal is x of t that is energy of a particular signal x of t is given by integral minus infinity to plus infinity modulus of x of t the whole square dt for power of a signal power everyone knows it is uh, energy per time so we will have uh, 1 by t naught integral minus t naught by 2 to t naught by 2 modulus of x of t the whole square dt for periodic signals for non periodic signal limit t naught tends to infinity minus t naught by 2 to t naught by 2 modulus of x of t the whole square dt so this is the formula for energy as well as power for an energy signal energy should be finite power should be zero energy signals are absolutely integrable signals if and only if minus infinity to plus infinity modulus of x of t dt is less than zero now we will see one problem for calculating energy of a signal x of t they have given 0 to 2 as a amplitude for a rectangular signal now what happens what is my formula for energy minus infinity to plus infinity modulus of x of t the whole square dt what is x of t amplitude over here amplitude is 4 upper 4 square is 16 limit ranging from 0 to 2 0 to 2 16 dt 16 constant take it outside you will have t integration of dt is t uh, limit upper limit is 2 lower limit 0 2 minus 0 is 2 2 into 16 32 this is the energy so very simple and important uh, concept next we will see power signal uh, we will take a problem and we will see how to find the power of the signal so this is a given signal we are going to calculate the power of the signal minus t naught to minus t naught by 2 0 to t naught by 2 t naught it keeps on going you can see the this is going to be the region where we are going to compute the power what is the power formula p is equal to 1 by t naught minus t naught by 2 to t naught by 2 modulus of x of t the whole square dt here the amplitude is going to be let us assume the amplitude here is a naught if i substitute here a naught square dt i will have dt is integration is t a naught square you can take it outside a naught square by t naught you have here the limit is t naught by 2 so for t naught t naught gets cancelled we will have a naught square by 2 always one shortcut i am telling please do remember this shortcuts uh, for um, sinusoidal signals that is sin omega naught t cos omega t a sin omega t a cos omega t the power is going to be amplitude square divided by 2 for exponential signals that is complex exponential signal e power j omega t the power is going to be amplitude square and uh, complex exponential signals sinusoidal a cos omega t plus theta a sin omega t plus theta all are going to be power signals you need not uh, try to uh, compute the value and find conclude whether it is energy signal or power signal by using the shortcut directly you can find and the answer is for uh, e power j omega t plus theta it is amplitude square for uh, sinusoids a sin omega t plus theta or a cos omega t plus theta it is amplitude square divided by 2 now let us consider a question x of t is equal to a naught sin omega naught t before solving the question itself i can say that it is going to be power signal and the amplitude is going to be amplitude square by 2 see here even if you derive it you will end up with this so you can remember the shortcuts as i said earlier and rms value you have to remember by the formula root mean square value it is a naught square divided by 2 root 2 we will have it so rms values a naught divided by root 2 and a very important points to note periodic signals are not energy signals because the energy content is infinity if the magnitude of the signal is infinity at any instant of time the signal will be neither uh, energy nor power so by looking into the question itself you can uh, say okay, whether the signal is uh, energy signal or power signal or neither energy or nor power signal so periodic signals are not energy signals because their uh, energy content 
is infinity and similarly if a mag magnitude of signal is infinity at any instant of time then the signal will be neither energy nor power so this shortcut you can remember and i will also introduce you with uh, properties of impulse signal uh, properties of impulse signal your impulse signal is following even function del of t is equal to del of minus t and it is neither energy nor power signal area under the impulse as i said earlier integral minus infinity to plus infinity del of t dt is equal to 1 always and the weight or strength of the impulse is given by integral minus infinity to plus infinity y of t dt if the amplitude if i am assuming it as a not you can take it a not outside minus infinity to plus infinity del of t dt this value i have assumed it already to be 1 so a not into 1 is a not this is the weight of the impulse signal and it is also following scaling property del of uh, a t minus t not is equal to 1 by mod a del of t 1 by mod a del of t we have another property x of t uh, multiplied with the del of t minus t1 is x of t1 dot del of t minus t1 here using the simple signal concept we may have some problems now let us see one problem here minus infinity to plus infinity x of t del of t plus 2 dt now we know by the property uh, this uh, impulse signal will exist only at uh, t is equal to 0 so what happens here this bracket inside it should become 0 when this bracket inside will become 0 only when we assume t is equal to minus 2 check whether minus 2 is existing in the integral as yes, it is existing so this becomes minus 2 it is x of minus 2 we will get so the final answer is x of minus 2 Similarly, del of t minus 2 sin n pi dt. What happens when this will become zero? Again, same. When we uh, we are put t is equal to 2, this becomes zero. 2 is existing in this interval. Yes, existing. Up a uh, here, your uh, t value is going to be 2. Up a uh, at that case, this becomes 1. Sin n pi is constant, so we will have the answer to be sin n pi. We will take another question. Integral minus infinity to plus infinity del of t minus 4 sine pi t dt. Now what happens here when that uh, del of t minus 4 will become zero? So the del of t minus 4 will become zero when we assume t to be 4. Apa 4 minus 4 is zero. Del of zero is 1. Apa t value is going to be 4. Sine 4 pi is going to be zero. So the integration value is zero. So some kind of problems we may have. Now we will see few get problems which are uh, asked uh, with respect to classifications of signals or operation on signal. Uh, first question: The impulse response of an LTI system can be obtained by impulse response. So impulse, na you know, differentiation of step will give you impulse. Where is that option? Just check differentiation of step. Okay, B is the answer. Directly we can say. Uh, differentiation of step will give the impulse. Differentiation of ramp will give you step. Differentiation of parabola will give you ramp. Similarly, integration of impulse will give you step. Integration of step will give you ramp. Integration of ramp will give you parabola. So you have to know this relation. If you know this relation, very simple by direct inspection we can give the answer. One mark is done. Next question. A yes, uh, discrete uh, signal. X of n is equal to sine pi square n, uh, n being an uh, integer. What is the uh, periodic with period pi, periodic with uh, period pi square, periodic with uh, pi by two or not periodic? Very simple. Pi omega value pi square two pi divided by pi square. You will end up with uh, pi again. So pi, it is not a rational value. A periodic. Directly we can conclude. A periodic signal, not a periodic signal. Next, evaluate. For a periodic signal, uh, v of t 30 sine 100 t plus uh, 10 sine 10 cos uh, 300 t plus 6 sine 500 t plus pi by 4. The fundamental uh, radians per second is what? So what we have to do first guess omega 100, omega 300, omega 500, omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. You know, find the HCF. If you find the HCF, what uh, what value you are getting? That will be the answer. So can someone quickly say what is the answer for this? HCF of omega one, omega two, omega three. You can find directly. So the answer is hundred. Yes. Next, the energy of a signal sine four pi t divided by four pi t. So what we have to do? Find the formula. Energy is energy formula. 
integral minus infinity to plus infinity modulus of x of t the whole square dt. Here you have got x of t to be sin 4 pi t divided by 4 pi t. This is substitute in the formula and uh, find what is the value that we are getting. Try to solve it. So this is one question where it is asked in the fill in the blanks instead of multiple choice question. So you can post it in the chat box so we can take the answer. Okay, so the answer is my uh, you will be either getting 0.24 or some people if the fraction values goes 0.25 or 0.26 only this is acceptable answer because we know that get examination for uh, fill in the blank questions it is accepting only up to two decimals not more than that so next question the period of the signal x of t is equal to 8 sin 0.8 pi t plus pi by 4 is very simple 0.8 pi omega value 0.8 pi upper 2 pi divided by 0.8 pi 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 gets cancelled 2 divided by 0.8 what is 0.8 you can uh, find the value of pi uh, take lcm you will get the answer 2 divided by 0.8 value you have to compute if you are computing it you will get 2.5 seconds so that's all very simple so these are all some gate problems which are asked in the previous years. If you have any queries, you can ask. So we have seen today, starting from uh, what is a yeah, signal, what is system, what is elementary signal, uh, what are the classifications of signals, operation on signals and problems with respect to operation on signals, classifications of signals. And we have also concluded with a few of the previous year gate problems. Any doubts? Okay, if there is no doubt we can uh, conclude our class. Thank you.